Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Chris Hutchinson, and today I thought it would be a fun day to do some fun tie dyeing. It's a beautiful day here in Eugene, Oregon, and it's my day off, so I thought, why not do a little tie dyeing? So I'm gonna be showing you some very cool tips on how to tie dye different ways. So here's a very, very extra tie dyeing with Chris Hutchinson. Here we go. Bloop. For brighter colors on your tie dye, you would want to soak it in this soda ash for at least 20 minutes per shirt. So I got some different things from Goodwill and the Dollar Tree to make designs on my tie dyes. Um, you'll see me use different applications on my t-shirts to use it. This was the first one I thought a table clock or like a fish or vintage table clock would work perfectly for a tie-dye shirt. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Um, it just kind of helped make it into more of a circle tie-dye than getting the actual prints and design on it. But I'll try using different types of things for this. So I'm not going to give up on this technique. So to continue with this design, I just kind of moved my shirt around and placed the tie-dye to make it still that circle effect. The shirt came out really cool looking in the end and still, it was a very cool tie-dye experience. For this next tie-dye, I'm going to try to crumble up my shirt. This is called the crumble tie-dye effect. Um, it didn't really turn out exactly like it, but it still came out as a cool shirt. I just basically um, scrunched up my shirt together and put rubber bands on it. And then I add my different colors of tie-dye to the shirt. This was one of my favorite result shirts. Um, I got this cool placemat or felt mat from the Dollar Tree during their holiday season. And I basically put it on my shirt and just kind of used the outline print of this. This was a nice big piece, so it actually worked on the t-shirt instead of bleeding out um, and not giving me the design effect that I wanted. Also, I went back with some shading on it, and I'm also gonna be doing a couple more shirts with this same print. I tried doing some other application leaves, but those did not work, but I figured we'll try to do the best we can to fix it, and just made this cool like tie-dye um, owl effect on the shirt. This shirt right here gave me the most trouble because I thought it would be a cool idea to use sticker letters or some type of letter application and it did not work. Um, I thought it would be really cool to have my name spelled out. But in the end result, this became one of my favorite shirts because off camera, I went and painted on the shirt and it turned out so cool. This really gave me really street vibe like... Um, 
street art effect on this shirt. So this is a very different shirt and very cool. And you'll see the end results at the end of the video. So here's another Dollar Tree hack. I got this wooden dowel from the Dollar Tree and I thought with the same thing with the owl concept that I can use the shape of this and kind of get the shape of the leaf onto the shirt. Um, this one kind of bled through. It didn't really hold its shape, but um, I was able to keep the shape of it um, at the end of the result, but it came out really cool and it turned out really interesting. These are some old shorts I have. They had stains on them, but I still wanted to keep them because they still fit. So I decided to tie dye these shorts. I didn't really have no theme or concept for these shorts. I just kind of wanted to use up the tie dye um, bottles I had before opening up a new kit. Um, so I just kind of picked random colors and just basically put them on the, or the shorts in random spots. Same thing with this button-down shirt, it had a stain on it, but it still fit me and I still wanted to use it, so I decided to tie-dye it and just do two colors. I just basically balled it up and tried to put rubber bands around it. Um, this shirt actually came out really cool at the end results, and yeah. This is my Harley Quinn shirt. It had a big stain on it, so I didn't want to get rid of it or buy a new one, so I decided to tie-dye it. So I decided to use red and blue on this shirt with a swirl theme uh, folding effect to it. And this turned out really interesting. This is a kitchen towel I have. As you see, it has a big stain on it. I'm gonna try to cover it up with the tie-dye, 
um, still pretty good usable towel, but just it's pretty stained or used. And I believe in trying to use up all the materials I have before throwing them away or donating them. So I'm gonna try to tie dye this towel and give it a cool tie dye effect for my kitchen. Same thing with this kitchen towel, it had a stain on it, but I still wanted to keep it and use it. So I did the swirl effect on it, put some rubber bands around it, and give it the rainbow tie-dye effect to it. This was another favorite application that I found at the Dollar Tree. It was a felt mat like the owl, and it turned out really cool. It really hold the leaf effect to the shirt. And so I just basically outlined it and filled in the spots. And it, I made a couple of these cool tie-dye effect shirts. I thought with the red and green, it would be a cool like dragon fruit-ish design concept. So you'll see here that I'll be putting um, the green, the red, and then I'm going to do in the background with black spots here in a second. I really like how this application worked, so I tried, did another shirt with it, but I wanted to do a frozen theme leaf to it because it kind of almost looked like also a um, snowflake with the design in the middle, so I decided to do a frozen theme tie-dye shirt. So I decided to use blue and purple on this shirt and just kind of give it like a cool tie-dye theme effect to it. I really liked how the owl effect came out, so I decided to do another t-shirt with it. This time I decided to do a pink owl. I thought the pink, I really liked the pink concept and I wanted to make this really simple and really cool looking. And then I added some blue for just some texture. So I did the swirl effect on this shirt and decided that I wanted a black tie-dye shirt. Um, so I'm just taking my black ink and just putting it in the spots. This turned out really cool at the end.
So those were all my tie-dye shirts. So with this one that I'm wearing, um, you saw me start the shirt, but you didn't see me finish the shirt. After it was washed and a lot of stuff was peeling off of it, I really wanted to take a chance to look at this shirt and figure out what was I going to do with it. So I decided to go with a street theme uh, layout, I guess, with it. And then I did the apps with Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, YouTube, Messenger, Grinder. You know, make sure you share, subscribe. And there's a like somewhere on here but i thought this turned out really cool and really cool, like good for advertising also these are the shorts that i tie dyed and the reason i tie dyed them was because they had a stain on them so i just want they were still good shorts but i just wanted to cover up the stain and i think these turned out really cool two kitchen towels This one is the first one. As you see, it's very cool, very tie-dye. And the second one is this one. There's the front and back. These are both very cool. These were still good towels that I didn't want to get rid of, but they did have some stains on them from just cooking and just from use out of them. And I thought this would give them a second chance or a second life out of them till they get ruined. I hope you like this tie-dye video. I hope you guys got some new ideas on how to tie-dye. Um, I'm really excited for future upcoming videos where I might do something a little similar with uh, some of the techniques I use. But if you like this video, make sure you're clicking the thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's free. Also, I'll be posting new videos every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Northwest time. I am Chris Hutchinson. Mwah. Till next time.